Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be using Universe Sandbox to explore Sahara Desert. We're actually going to be discovering why this huge portion of land is completely deserted and talk about how all of this relates to space science. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this huge, huge desert known as Sahara takes out about a third of the entire African continent. And you can kind of see it extends all the way here to the Arabian Peninsula and even further on into Iran and even other regions. As a matter of fact, if you were to draw a line here, you would see that it's actually kind of linear in a sense. Um, now, there's a reason for that, and we're going to be talking about why and how all of this happens. And all of this is based on various studies uh, that basically studied the sedimental deposits in Sahara and around various countries here and discovered that this actually didn't happen that long ago. As a matter of fact, and we're going to try to maybe simulate this a little bit, uh, this used to be like this. Now, to try to understand what happened here, we actually would have to go back about 6,000 years ago, uh, or maybe even 8,000 years ago, when all of the Sahara was actually completely covered in grass. It was a luscious uh, grassland with a lot of vegetation and a lot of really wet climate. And then something started happening. Now, that something might be... A little bit tricky to explain, but to explain this, we're actually going to go into a simulation that has Earth and the Sun, which I think uh, this, this is good enough, and we're going to slow down time a little bit. Now, our planet actually wobbles around its axis. Now, it's not visible if you just run this for a few years, but it becomes quite apparent if you run the simulation for thousands of years. As a matter of fact, this wobble um, is due to the imperfection of the orbit of Earth, and it's kind of similar to what you get if you try to spin a top on top of a table and you don't do a really good job and it starts wobbling here and there. So Earth does the same. So its actual um, tilt, which is displayed if you go under here, obliquity, changes, and you can see it change right now, um, from about 22 to about 25 degrees. Now here it doesn't change as much. This is actually due to the moon, but you can see it's slowly increasing in size. Um, so it's from about 20 to 25 degrees every 40,000 years or so. And in between about 8,000 years ago and now, it actually changed from approximately 24.1 degrees to 23.4 degrees. In other words, if you were to actually uh, look at the actual Africa here, we're going to stop in Africa, the actual axis changed from about this much to about this much. So it shifted just a little bit. But this shift was enough for uh, for us to witness two things. And also it's not just a shift, but there's also something else that happened during the, that time. But this shift was enough for um, the entire region of equator to shift just a little bit and for essentially this region here not to receive as much light anymore. Now, about uh, 8,000 years ago, there was also another thing. As you probably know, um, Earth it doesn't have a perfectly circular orbit, so once in a while, specifically in January, it actually comes to the periapse of its orbit, and that's when Earth is going to be the closest to the Sun, so right around here-ish. It's going to be in the closest position, so basically it's going to receive a lot more sunlight. And then um, when it's on the other side, it's going to receive the least sunlight. But 8,000 years ago, the closest point was actually in August. So middle of the summer in this particular region uh, received quite a lot of light. So 8,000 years ago, this region right here received a lot, a lot, a lot more sunlight. And because of this, it was easier for vegetation to grow here. 
And because the vegetation uh, grew here so much, and because this also increased the amount of monsoon rains, uh, what vegetation did, what, what the actual plants did, is that they actually retained a lot of moisture and released it back into the air, creating even more rain. So it was like a, a, a cycle. So, you know, like for example, right here, it's currently raining here. This rain falls onto the ground, the plants maintain the water, then they release it back into the atmosphere and create more rain. So in this region, this is actually what's happening. Um, because of all of the monsoon rains and because of uh, all of the heat that this region is receiving. Here, however, as the temperature decreased, it actually got to the point where the monsoon started to die out. And because of this, vegetation started to die out as well and slowly receded away, creating this empty land right here. So ironically, the reason why we have Sahara in this region is not because it got hotter, but because it actually received less sunlight due to the shift in tilt and due to the decrease in um, distance to the sun. But obviously after about 20 to 30,000 years, it will once again receive a lot more sunlight and so chances for this region to be um, full of veg vegetation again is actually pretty high. But until then, we're basically stuck with this huge deserted area due to essentially all of the vegetation dying out. Now, there's maybe other reasons for vegetation to die out, such as, for example, human activity or maybe animal activity, but there's no proof of any of that. There's just proof that um, vegetation disappeared and that the monsoon rains became less frequent and because of that, the certification increased. But that's not the end of the story. As a matter of fact, there's actually something else that is happening uh, a lot faster now. So the tilt I just mentioned has actually started to increase in speed in the last hundred years. As a matter of fact, we didn't realize until recently that the tilting effect started to uh, accelerate. Now, don't forget that one of the reasons our tilt is not more extreme is because of the moon. Our moon actually stabilizes our tilt and lets us prevent from tilting too much. Um, but the speed of the tilt isn't actually helped by the moon. As a matter of fact, the speed of the tilt is helped by the tremendous weight that northern and southern poles create due to all of the ice here. And as the ice cap started to melt, specifically right here in Greenland, a lot of these ice caps actually started to melt. And I'm going to simulate this by doing the following. By basically moving Earth a lot closer to the sun. So as these ice caps started to melt, all of the water kind of got distributed into the rest of the oceans now. And so the northern and the southern pole started to lose a lot of their essentially weight. And because of this, Earth started to tilt faster. In other words, the actual tilting effect has accelerated. And because of this, we will now be experiencing more seasonal changes even more frequently. And this, of course, has a tremendous effect on weather, specifically on rain, monsoon, for example, and um, of course may actually increase uh, the desertification of other regions. It might not actually provide enough time for various regions to replenish uh, the vegetation, but for all we know, because of this climate change and because of the decrease in the ice caps, which you're going to see in a few seconds, all right, here we go. This is a little bit more extreme, but there we go. Because of all of this ice disappearing, um, we now will be receiving a lot more desertification in other regions and not enough replenishment of the actual deserts because usually it takes a little bit longer for us to replenish the deserted regions um, than, than what we're witnessing right now. So in other words, the, there is yet another problem that the climate change is creating. Specifically, the melting of the caps is going to basically shift the weight of the planet around, making the tilting of the axis even faster and thus increasing the change in climate even more. So there you go, yet another problem from the climate change and from all of the ice caps melting. If the increased water level wasn't enough, now we have a completely new problem to deal with. But anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. I really just wanted to explain what we know about the Sahara Desert and how we think it was formed, and specifically 
how various uh, space-related parameters, specifically the tilt of the orbital axes, can actually influence the climate on the planet and how they have actually created this unusually beautiful desert in Africa. Anyway, if you learned something from this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.